Freight trains may not look like the most aerodynamic machines compared to, say, a bullet train, but that doesn't mean we can't make them more efficient. I'm Wayne Kennedy, a fuel efficiency expert for railroads. I formed and led a fuel conservation group for over 10 years at a large class one railroad, saving them hundreds of millions of gallons of diesel fuel. Now as a consultant, I help other railroads in their fuel savings and greenhouse gas emissions reduction journey. Every year, almost 50,000 new rail cars are built in the US and Canada alone, and a small adjustment to their design called aero treatments can lead to big fuel savings. Aerodynamic modifications like smooth edges, fairings, filling in voids, or simple deflectors could cost only about $1,000 per rail car, while leading to large improvements in fuel efficiency through aerodynamic drag reduction. That's less than 1% of the total cost of a new car. But here's the kicker. With just these small tweaks, we can see fuel savings of 7-10% to 10 depending upon the car type and the application. That's a huge potential reduction in emissions and operating costs with a payback period of less than two years. So why isn't this being done across the board? It's a little more complicated than it seems. The rail industry is a web of different players and car owners, and that's where the challenge comes in. Here's the issue. Railroads only own about 20% of the cars that they move. The other 80%, they're owned by either leasing companies or the customers who need the goods moved. So if a railroad doesn't own the cars, who's responsible for paying for these modifications? The owners of the cars or the railroads who would benefit from the fuel savings? It's a classic problem of who pays versus who benefits. The owners might hesitate to spend money on modifications if they're not the ones who are directly saving the fuel expense. On the flip side, the railroads might not want to invest in modifications for cars that they don't own even if they save fuel in the process. Another caveat is a given railroad might pay for modifications to a leased fleet of cars that then go on to other railroads, saving other railroads fuel and not themselves. The shared nature of car fleets on North American rail makes this a thorny issue. But this isn't an impossible problem to solve. What's needed is creative commercial agreements between car owners and railroads. Maybe a cost sharing model or incentives tied to fuel savings could make it a win-win for everyone involved. Leasing agents who pay for modifications could charge a small premium to railroads for using their more fuel efficient rolling stock. Or if customers pay for modifications to their own owned fleets, railroads could share some fuel savings in terms of a slight rate reduction. Remember, with over a million rail cars in the US alone, this is a massive opportunity. Even though it's a tough nut to crack, aligning incentives between stakeholders could result in enormous benefits, not just for the industry, but for the environment as well. The next time you see a freight train rolling by, think about how a small modification to those rail cars could make a big difference in fuel savings and sustainability. The trucking industry has been successfully introducing aerodynamic improvements for many decades and have made great strides in reducing aerodynamic drag with resulting mile per gallon fuel efficiency improvements. It's time that the railroads took notice and went down a similar path for the benefit of the industry and the environment.